Welcome back to Lundgren Bronze Studios. Over the past several years, I've been learning the art of bronze smithing in my garage. And while I've done a lot of conventional style projects, sometimes I like to experiment, and I wanted to see if I could take a grasshopper and transform it into bronze. The first step I took was to pin them into position. I didn't really want the legs to move around, so I figured if I position them the way I want and let them dry, they'd hold their shape better. I used to do this all the time when I was little for the bugs in my bug collection. After about a week, I figured they were ready to go. They looked to be. I also made a few wax casts of some branches so they'll have something to sit on when I cast them. After pinning them to the wax branch, I used some molten wax to help connect them. That'll give me a conduit for the metal to flow from the wax branch into the grasshopper void. I also attach the feet with wax to give it a better chance of having that metal flow all the way through the leg. Having metal flow through such a small thin area is kind of tricky and this is kind of an experiment to see if it's going to work. I'm not going to want that metal pin in there when I cast it so I decided to remove that. Those blobs of molten wax don't look very good, so by using a dental pick, I can put the wood pattern back in the wax. Now it's time to sprue it up. It's a pretty straightforward process with this. I'll just have one sprue enter from the bottom, so it fills from the bottom up, and one vent in the top, so any gas can escape. I'm not going to worry about venting the legs because I'm going to vacuum cast this and that'll help me get away with some of that. I'll try a few different ones to help increase my chances of having one turn out. And I'll add one to an existing project because there's room, so why not? This one will be a solo grasshopper, not attached to any wood base, and we'll see if it's any different than the others. Both the powder and the water have to be weighed specifically to get a good mixture. I normally use a vacuum chamber to help suck out any bubbles that get trapped during the mixing process. It normally helps for a better casting, but with this, we'll see. I steam the wax out first so I can capture it and reuse it, and then it goes into the kiln for the burnout. I raise the temperature of the kiln over many hours. If I go too fast, it can damage the investment and lower the quality of the casting. But once it's hot, it's up there. The wax will melt away, but with the grasshopper, it's different. The grasshopper has to completely burn away, and there's no oxygen, so that takes time. How long? I'm not sure. One of the best flowing metals there is is silicon bronze, so I'm going to use that for this project. The flask goes into my vacuum chamber, and as the vacuum is drawn, all the air will flow through the investment and help draw the metal into all those tiny little spaces, like the legs. This is always the most exciting part for me. I love watching the metal flow into the flask. The quench helps break up the investment and helps release the bronze pieces inside. So that was a test to see how much of the grasshopper would actually be burned out and how well the vacuum would work to get all the little detail. The eld turned out pretty good. But look at this. I cannot believe how detailed that is. Even the antenna has been captured in metal. It's a metal antenna. So that tells me that 10 hours is long enough for the burnout. 
So I'm gonna pour the other ones. My vacuum chamber also converts to a vacuum table. If you wanna see how I built that, I have a video series on that too. The vacuum table is just another way of drawing a vacuum through the flask. These are looking pretty good so far, but let's clean them up a little bit better and find out. A sandblaster really helps get them clean. Once I cut them free, I'll take a small wire wheel on a Dremel to help give them a little bit more buffing. Upon closer inspection though, I'm starting to see some problems. There's a lot of flaws in this, and the quality I'm looking for just isn't there. So that is really cool, but it didn't quite turn out the way I had hoped. So there's a lot of imperfections in it, and if I look close, I can see investment is inside the grasshopper. I have to ask, how did investment get inside? And the only thing I can think of is the vacuum chamber. I dried these grasshoppers out. If you've ever seen the inside of a grasshopper, it's all goo. So that probably means it was all hollow inside. And when I turned on the vacuum chamber, it sucked all the investment through the exoskeleton and inside the grasshopper. And that's not what I want. I'm not gonna leave it at that. I think we can do better. So let's try it again. So I had to catch some more grasshoppers. Oh, help, please. But this time I'm not gonna dry them out. I'm gonna position the legs as they're still fresh and wax the feet to the wax wood to maintain the position. I figure if I don't dry them out, there won't be any space for the investment to crawl into. I'm also gonna avoid the vacuum chamber altogether. I mixed the investment just a little bit thicker this time so it has more viscosity and I made a test piece out of plaster. I really want to see what this looks like when it's burned out, how long it takes and if there's any ash in there. Anything to find out why the casting had so many flaws. After letting the test piece burn for about 8 hours I figured it was a good time to see what's going on inside. And the grasshopper was completely gone. I didn't see any ash or any remnants of it at all. So I'll carry on with these next castings. The nice thing about the vacuum table is that it can take a flask of any shape. The investment retains a lot of heat, so I have to let it sit a while so it's not too violent when I quench it, but not too long that it doesn't boil away. These are looking pretty promising. Let's get them cleaned up. Carefully buff them with a wire wheel. I don't want to wipe away the antennas, but I still want to bring a little bit of a shine to them. I use some protective clear to help seal the metal. That way when I do the patina, there'll be some contrast between the wood and the grasshopper. 
For the patina, I use liver of sulfur. It gives the bronze that nice, rich brown color. But because the grasshopper was sealed, it stays more that golden bronze. That worked so much better than the first time. It just blows me away, the detail that even the antennas are captured. I definitely want to try some more insects. This opens up a really cool world of possibilities for some really cool projects. Thanks for sticking around to watch that one. Come on back for more videos. Take care.